Today, I want to cover the importance of having inspections done when acquiring property. Most people see this as only a buyer issue, but I'm going to talk about why inspections are important from a seller point of view. In this crazy multiple offer market, I am seeing more and more contracts without an option provision and buyers buying the property without inspections. Reminder to all, just because there is no option period allowing a buyer to terminate the contract, inspections are allowed, authorized, and provided for under a separate paragraph, paragraph 7A of the contract. Seller must allow access to the property for buyer's inspections. However, without an option period, buyer does not have much leverage to ask seller to make repairs because he has no right to terminate the contract when the physical condition of the property is unacceptable. Side note. Anytime a buyer chooses not to do inspections, please have buyer sign something acknowledging that inspections were recommended, but buyer chose not to make them. Now let's talk about why a seller wants the buyer to make inspections. The legal elements of a fraud claim are, one, misrepresentation by omission or commission made by someone who, two, knows or should have known of the defect, then three, reliance on that misrepresentation, and then four, damages. Sellers provide a seller's disclosure notice, which is a disclosure of the defects they know or should have known exist on the property. In a typical transaction, buyer then makes inspections and has the right to terminate if the condition is not satisfactory. When inspections are done, buyer no longer just relies on the SDN to make decisions, potentially eliminating one crucial element necessary to hold the seller liable for fraud. For example, if buyer inspects the property, the inspection reveals an issue not otherwise disclosed, but should have been disclosed on the SDN, then closes the transaction, and then incurs cost to repair the defect, buyer has closed on reliance on the inspection report and not seller's statements or lack thereof. Let me share a story about something that happened the other day. Buyer bought a property without an option period and without making inspections. A hailstorm hit the day before closing. Buyer sent a roofer out to the house, and roofer said that the roof was totally destroyed. The question asked of me by the listing agent, who's responsible? Given only these facts, this clearly falls under the casualty loss paragraph of the contract, paragraph 14, which reads, if any part of the property is damaged or destroyed by fire or other casualty after the effective date of this contract, seller shall restore the property to its previous condition as soon as reasonably possible, but in any event, by the closing date. If seller fails to do so due to factors beyond seller's control, buyer may, one, terminate the contract and the earnest money be refunded to buyer, or two, extend the time for performance up to 15 days and the closing date will be extended as necessary, or three, accept the property in its damaged condition with an assignment of insurance proceeds, if permitted by the seller's insurance carrier and then receive credit from seller at closing in the amount of the deductible under the insurance policy. Seller's obligations under this paragraph are independent of any other obligation of seller under the contract. The facts, however, are not always black and white. This hailstorm was minor. There was no other damage reported in the neighborhood, no dents on cars, etc. Seller's roofer said that the hailstorm was so minor there was no way it caused this kind of damage. With this new information, now it becomes an issue of one, did the minor health storm cause any damage invoking the casualty loss paragraph? And two, if the roof is totally destroyed and seller didn't disclose it, why not? Did seller not know? If the roof was totally destroyed, should seller have known? In this scenario, my suggestion was to go ahead and call out the seller's insurance adjuster and consider trying to negotiate a split of the deductible between buyer and seller. I know a separate roof inspection is not always done when buyers do typical inspections. However, an inspector will recommend a roof inspector if in his normal course of making the inspection, he sees a concern. Inspections of property are good for buyers and good for sellers. Therefore, a contract purportedly, purportedly waiving them should not be considered a better offer than one that does not. I hope this video podcast gives you some food for thought. If you have a topic you would like me to address in the future, please send it to me at tipoftheweek at allegiancetitle.com. Thank you.